So as I said in last week's video, this year I've reviewed somewhere close to 30 or 40 different fountain pens this year. And as well as that, I've bought at least 40 or 50 different pens. So in that huge collection, there's obviously pens that I regret buying, pens that certainly aren't worth buying. And in this video, I just wanna make a quick list of the pens which I think aren't worth buying for whatever reason. This is not a list of the worst fountain pens that I have bought, but a lot of the pens that are on this list certainly aren't pens that I'm not gonna be using in the future. So hopefully with this video, I can give you guys a little bit of a shortcut and hopefully just quickly tell you what pens you should not be buying in my opinion. And first of all, let me talk about a pen which I actually enjoy using, but I don't think is worth the money. And that pen here is the Super 5. And I really regret putting this on this list because this pen was given to me by a good friend of mine, um, Bill. And this pen I really do enjoy using. This one here has an italic nib on it. It's a really fine italic nib, which is something that I love writing with. You get very nice natural line variation without having to push down hard on the nib. It's very, very nice and it's actually pretty comfortable to use. The issue that I have with this pen though is unfortunately the capping mechanism. And that's something that I touched on in the review of the pen. What I pretty much said was, after using the pen for about a month or two, the amount of force that it would take to put the cap on the pen and the amount of force that it would take to take the cap off was starting to reduce. And ever since I made that review, and it's now been about nine or 10 months, the capping mechanism has completely worn out. It takes no pressure to put the cap on and it takes no pressure whatsoever to rip the cap off. And that is a big issue in terms of everyday carrying. And that's something that has pretty much made it so I don't take this pen anywhere. I pretty much leave it on my desk and use it for you know writing when I'm at home. And that is a huge shame for this fountain pen because I really do enjoy using it. But honestly, with this issue, I honestly cannot recommend this pen for other people. And as well as that, I've had about four or five people reach out to me and tell me that they've had a similar issue. So I honestly cannot recommend this pen until Super 5 fix this issue. The next pen that I'll put on this list is a pen that I had on really recently, and that's the Moonman ATS. And I was really hopeful for the Moonman ATS. It is a pretty nice looking clone of the Parker 45, and I was really hopeful. It looked like it had a very nice nib from the AliExpress website, as well as that, it was made by Moonman, the same people who made the Moonman M2, which was on my top five fountain pen list. Though unfortunately, this fountain pen was an utter disaster. For example, it had a very bad nib and a very, very inconsistent feed, which pretty much made me not want to use this fountain pen. And that is the biggest issue with this pen. Even since I've made the review, I've tried to fix the feed issues to stop it skipping. And I have improved the nib a little bit. It doesn't skip as much as it used to. But even then, when this pen does work it is very very boring to use there's no flex it is hard as nails and as well as that it does start to run dry every now and then and for these reasons I just cannot recommend this pen and it really wasn't all that cheap if I remember correctly, it was four or five dollars. And well, obviously that is not the same price that you would pay for a proper Parker 45 or something in that price bracket. It's still four or five dollars, which I don't think you should be spending on this pen. The next pen that will be on my list is this. This is the Jinhao 991. And this pen really doesn't have any faults. When I receive these pens, they're actually pretty good. Jinhao pens nowadays are actually a lot better than they used to be. The pens that I've gotten recently have been pretty much free from defects and their new nibs, which they've been cranking out since the middle of last year, are actually really, really good. And these pens here, no faults whatsoever. But the biggest issue with these pens here is they are incredibly boring to use. These pens are, well, just look at them. 
They are designed to look like uh, rollerball pens, which for one, aren't very, very attractive to look at. And as well as that, they are very, very slim fountain pens. They're very light fountain pens. And as well as that, the nibs on them are pretty boring. And look, I don't expect all that much from lower end fountain pens, but considering that for the same price as these, you can get the Jinhao Shark, you can get the Jinhao 99 two Jinhao 993, which are far superior fountain pens in terms of um, their aesthetics and ergonomics. I think it is a complete waste of time and money to go ahead and order a Jinhao 991. There's nothing wrong with them, but they are very, very boring and they are just a bit of a waste of $2. The next pen that's on my list is this. This is the Lambitao 3059, and this is a pen that I actually reviewed last year. But the thing is, this is a pen that I received this year after being told that Lambitao had slightly changed their nib and feed design, which while they slightly did, it wasn't much of an improvement and it really didn't warrant a new review, but it really does deserve to be on this list because the Lambitao 3059 is pretty much just another Chinese attempt to create a cheap piston fountain pen and while they have succeeded they haven't really done a good job at it. I think pens such as the Wingsung 3008 do a much better job at being Chinese piston fountain pens. This one here really was a pretty poor attempt. First of all the aesthetics. While from a distance it looks all right up close, it really doesn't look all that nice. The clip, for instance, is very, very ugly. You can see an exposed Phillips head screw in the cap. This here has the words Lambistown stamped in big, ugly font along here. 3059 and some weird symbol is stamped right along here. The whole design is just ugly. As well as that, this is, I think, a hexagonal shaped um, cap, while this body here is cylindrical. And as well as that, they have ergonomic facets, but they have done it on three sides, and that is just very, very uncomfortable. My point is, this fountain pen here is uncomfortable to use, and it's very, very ugly. The nib is very, very good, but honest, honestly, with a pen that's so ugly and uncomfortable, in my opinion, to use, I don't think people should be spending, I think, three or four dollars to buy this pen. Honestly, pens such as the Wingsung 3008 are about the same price as this and are a much, much better um, attempt to create Chinese, cheap Chinese piston filler fountain pens. This pen here is just a waste of money. And as well as that, the material that is used is not as robust as the Wingsung 3008. And as a result, it's much more prone to getting scratched. Finally on this list, we have the Wingsung 3007, which is, I think, the second fountain pen that I reviewed this year. And that is just such a long time ago. And this is a fountain pen that I really chewed out in the video. It really was a very, very poor attempt to create a clone of the Kaveco Sport. For instance, I know this is something that is limited to me, but the cap would not post. For whatever reason, it just wasn't molded correctly, and this has happened to a few other people, but for whatever reason, this pen would not post at all. You put this on and you push down as hard as you can, and it just falls off, which uh, is, is, is something that is pretty unacceptable for a pen, even if the pen does cost $3. As well as that, the pen itself was very, very uncomfortable. It was a crazy thin body. I think this is only 10 millimeters in diameter. And they tried to do an ergonomic type grip, which is very, very uncomfortable. It's not shaped correctly, and it's just uncomfortable to hold on, even in the proper um, tripod grip. As well as that, the nib wasn't very, very good. Wingsung are great at making nibs, though their pilot style nibs really have a bit of work to do. They have not perfected it yet, and it was scratching. And as well as that, this pen here did not take um, Wingsung uh, converters, and 
As a result, you had to use cartridges, and Wing Sun cartridges aren't as easy to come by, and they're not all that cheap from what I remember. And for that reason, I don't think I would recommend this pen. There are much better pocket fountain pens that you can buy from China, and this one here really was not a great pocket fountain pen. And that's pretty much it. The five fountain pens from this year that I really cannot recommend. These fountain pens, for whatever reason, have issues which I don't think you guys should be spending your money on, though this really is my opinion. And anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. And I can't wait to be doing this channel in 2019. I have a lot of stuff planned for that, but until then, enjoy the new year. Thank you very much for watching.